Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Here's a few of the highlights of the finished product. You know, how much more clear can uh, a drawing screen be? It's well worth real glass for your face. A couple days ago I finished up on my uh, computer console and I uh, wanted to bring you up to date on my progress uh, putting my package deal together. Uh, <laughs> almost looks like uh, the robot in Lost in Space, huh? Oh, you don't think so? We're Rogers! We're Rogers! We're wa Warning! Warning, warning, warning. <laughs> okay, cut the crap. You know, um, but that doesn't remind me. That was that was a long time ago. That was when I was young and my skin was tight. Um, most most people that know me know that I would never just take a computer and stuff it in a box and uh, hope for the best or or copy anybody else's design. Uh, uh, this is a picture I had in my head and uh, and and I was able to make it work. Um, but, you look at this and you go, wow, how much money did it cost them to put that together? Uh, I have a lot of drops and, and rims that were in the shop, and I probably only had to buy half of the material for this. And I still came under what a seat license would cost you to have another program just 25 feet away in my own home with my own use to design in there. Um, but you know what? This is on wheels, and two plugs, you can unplug it, and then you'd be able to just roll this do right across the driveway, light up a plywood board uh, into a six foot slider. It will fit through a six foot slider. This is 34 inches right here. Um, you know, and that might, that might be a beneficial lock. This could be wheeled from the shop location into an office, and then you could have the comfort in there. Uh, so it, it is an alternative. 
But basically, I had it so that I can maneuver it anywhere I want. And uh, so, you know, I don't have that second seat license, and I'm not in there in the, in the house uh, designing. I can put this if I want to change a view or the way I want to sit in the shop, or I got a project going on here and I want to move it over there. Uh, that, those, those give me that option. I anchored the monitor down, and I could put a support in there on the PC, and I could go crashing across the driveway if I wanted. Um, Okay, let's uh, roll it into position where we're going to use it when we have the machine hooked up. Now I'm not uh, trying to portray that I'm God's gift to uh, a plasma cam. Uh, that would be a nearly impossible task, uh, yeah. <laughs> even if it was a desire. I mean, um, 8,843 is uh, a serial number on a machine. If they're going consecutive for the machine sold, then there is 8,842 go-getters that have uh, got a head start on them. I uh, am putting these videos together and, and publishing them as records of how I've constructed and put together my Pacific unit. Uh, also along the way, it's more for customer awareness. Uh, seeing a lot of other things that I can do besides marine shafting. <laughs> along the way, there's some scenes in there of me actually uh, using my plasma torch by hand uh, with the experience that I picked up over the years and, and how I went about uh, plasma cutting. Okay, this, uh, this cabinet, basically just like you went to your desk in the office or whatever, and uh, except I'm going to turn on the air fan. Now we're creating pressure inside there. Uh, and I will run that fan even if I'm not going to be using this time to time. If I'm creating an environment in here that I feel is detrimental to the computer inside. Uh, Alright, we got the, uh, the fan on. And you get it open. Turn on the PC. Um, here's one, the, <laughs> looking in the first video I made of uh, Skeleton, and I was so worried about where the mouse pad was going to be, and it was the very last thing that I actually built and put on here, and it is as simple as that. After I changed over to the wireless keyboard and mouse, I went ahead and cut a new plate, sculpted out so that it would match this. I'll probably put some double sticky on there so it doesn't go. Turn on the monitor. All that is is a straight push rod, Dalvin uh, guide, and our speakers. Now in uh, test running this thing for the last couple days, it's been pretty warm here, uh, and we've been uh, 80 plus in the shop. Um, I pulled the felt out of this opening here and I stuffed a nice clean rag into that venturi of this tube. One, I have five tubes going across here breathing from this chamber to this one. And I stuffed a rag in there so that the flow wouldn't interrupt uh, the area right in front of this. And right about here is the PC exit uh, on its fan motor and the heat uh, is quickly removed from the cabinet and I cut the temperature on the PC down by half and we'll always have a positive flow here and uh, we'll see how it is. These Delrin uh, inserts I made, I can pop these out, in fact this one here I'm going to drill another hole so I can carry a uh, ground wire from the PC cabinet to the clip uh, where the uh, parallel cable uh, joins the, uh, the controller and uh, so they're easy to come in and out and they finish off and they make nice uh, restraints for these cables, no damage. Um, aluminum plate here, and this is our power supply. Two separate units, one for the table, one for the PC. Another unit for the welder. Went on to the new four uh, prong plug so that I could carry the neutral and the ground. And this is isolated from the table, it's not making contact anywhere in here. Also air is going to come down in this area right here, and I'll probably mount this uh, air dryer in this uh, location here, down here, somewhere in this area right here. I'm kind of putting that in. I just got it today, so I'm kind of looking at it. And like anything else, I'll probably mull over it uh, 
uh, a little bit and then uh, make a final decision and make a nice mount for it. All right, uh, this is uh, how I anchored it down to the, the ground um, with uh, an adapter plate because I didn't feel that there was a comfortable room coming in here to drill and put a lag in at this point. Also, if you've ever drilled in concrete and you're close tolerance and, and you come down, the very first stone that you hit, I don't care the quality of your masonry drill, the very first stone you hit is not center drill to keep your hole straight. I haven't found one yet. Anyway, it'll deviate your drill and then you're going to be pulling your leg and you're going to cause undue stress on, on your legs. So I came out here where it was comfortable. I put in two half inch lags, they're not tight yet. I slotted them so I have motion in here. All right, this is the leg with no shim. All right, diagonal across from the, uh, the first leg there. This is one inch high here. This is the lowest point of the floor. Uh, I think this floor, when Captain Pegleg uh, poured this floor, he, uh, he used his glass eye. This is the corner uh, under the table controller, 7 sixteenths of an inch. And here's opposite of that, we got 3 quarter inch on the shim there. Now you notice uh, we don't have a stack of washers, we machined those uh, slugs to be exactly uh, the, the thickness that we shimmed it overall when we set it up. There's a grounding rod, 28 feet in the ground. We had continuity uh, to uh, ground at 24, and we went the extra. And then we have quarter inch copper round clamped to it, and that will go up to the table. Okay, the last uh, thing we were doing, when we were pounding up our feet and everything, getting our level, and uh, we took a piece of square stock, and we were putting it against our actual sheet guides and we were running our indicator along those, checking those. In the process of it set up in here, I saw a drop of the actual indicator point dropping as it went. And of course, I had the indicator extended way out here. And, um, and we had run out. We, couldn't, we chased the problem around for a little bit. And we ended up choking it up, putting our indicator about an inch and a half off the box here another one off the box there and we'll end our travel here we found a discrepancy on uh, on maintaining uh, levelness here and we indicated a twist into the, uh, the the main gantry tube plasma cam is sending us out another one and uh, we'll get that changed out and then we'll get on to finalizing our level and setup all right the while we're waiting for all of it the uh, work that we're going to have to do on changing that out and getting this. Um, we're, 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 on the put, we're putting down that suction and you've seen the 4 inch PVC piping coming down on each side of the uh, table here. These uprights are just to hold my elbows in uh, position there. Uh, they will be changed out with uh, 4 inch schedule 10 uh, aluminum and then they're going to come down. So we're kind of playing around with the downdraft suction, but we also want to include a water table. And this sheet actually is going to be the bottom of the water tray. And uh, we're going to shape uh, the sides and we're going to shape the cowling that's going to go underneath for the air suction uh, to suit the table. We're kind of working on that right now. Also, when I look at this table all the way around here, and I figured this width for the length there, We've got nine square feet of open breathing area that your suction has to take part of before you even have a pierce in the plate. So we're going to fabricate a cowling that is not going to interfere with the operation of the machine, but it's going to set in here and close off nine square feet of free breathing space on the top of this table. And that's kind of run. That's you know, this is where it's led up to, and this is, uh, this is kind of where we're at right now.